Hello everyone, happy Holy Saturday. Today's reading comes from Matthew chapter 27 and it's verses 57 to 66. It says, As evening approached, there came a rich man from Arimathea. I apologise, I know that pronunciation isn't correct, but it's the best that I can do. Named Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut out of the rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the entrance to the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting there opposite the tomb. The next day, the one after preparation day, the chief priests and the Pharisees went to Pilate, Sir, they said, we remember that while he was still alive, that deceiver said, after three days, I will rise again. So give the order for the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may come and steal the body and tell the people that he is raised from the dead. This last deception will be worse than the first. Take a guard, Pilate answered. Go make this tomb as secure as you know how. So they went and they made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and posting the guard. I think some of my favourite parts of the Bible are when we are given little details like this because you can see the heart behind the writer. You can see that Matthew was trying to convince us of the truth of the Easter story. He tells us these details so that we can see the facts and we can look at this and we can say that there is no other way that Jesus was getting out of this tomb. The only way that Jesus was getting out of this tomb was through the resurrection that he promised. And I think that the women who are outside grieving have forgotten that promise. They had forgotten that and so they were grieving and we knew that they thought he was dead because they were bringing spices and they were preparing the body and they were wrapping him and they were leaving him there. They hadn't anticipated yet the joy that was to come in the following days. So many of us are feeling so sad and hopeless, just like these women were on that day. And I think that me included, I have forgot the promises that Jesus has given us for our own lives. He says that we are to have life to the full. Our blessings will be new every morning. He promises to love us and he also promises to protect us. I think that if these women remembered what Jesus had been saying the whole time, they wouldn't be mourning outside of his tomb, but they'd be waiting outside of his tomb for him to come back. They'd be st sitting there eagerly waiting to be the first people to meet him when he comes back. So just as they were waiting, or should have been waiting, um, for that promise to be fulfilled, I'm waiting to see God fulfill those same promises. And every day I see him prepare me for the day to come, and I see him um, give me new testimony and give me new experiences and conversations with people that remind me that he is continually working in me and fulfilling those promises. And I believe that he will do that for everyone as well. I believe that he has promised that not only to me, but to us all. I've left a prayer in the description. I just love this scripture um, because I think it's left out, but I think there's a lot to learn from what is said in, in these little small parts in between the big parts of the Easter story. And so I hope that I've given you something to think about today. And I hope you guys have a great Easter. Thank you for listening.